Hey booktube, Lynette here again and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the books that I plan to read in April. So in April I'm intending to only take part in readathons or read-alongs. Um, there are two that I've already signed up for which have been ongoing since the start of the year and that is the uh, Romanceopoly readathon and also the In-Death read-along. Romanceopoly, as I've talked about before in these videos, is uh, we're playing Monopoly with romance books, basically, and I have a Monopoly board set up and I go around the board and landing on various squares and each square gives me a different theme or trope and I pick a book to read in that theme or trope. Uh, so I picked three books again for April um, and I will tell you all about those in a moment. The in-depth read-along is to read at least one book from J.D. Robb's in-depth series a month and I will be continuing with the read-along for that and I'll tell you which book I'm going to be reading for that one as well. I'm doing one other readathon this month and I'm ignoring anything else on my TBR uh, completely because I am going to do the Owls readathon um, which is a magical readathon based around the classes that they take in Harry Potter. Uh, this readathon was originally set up by G over at Book Roast, uh, which is a great channel. Highly recommend you follow her. Um, she, she's very, very good. She reads a lot of fantasy novels. And uh, yes, so in April, we're doing our owls, which is the ordinary wizarding level tests. And then later on in the year, she will also do a readathon for the newts. Nine. Nine takes me to autumn, so I'm going to move that on one to the office. So, first off, continuing with the uh, Romanceopoly, the first book that I have, have picked, I've landed on Square The Office, and this is to read a non-contemporary romance where the couple meet at their place of work. And I have decided to pick... The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt. I haven't really looked very much into the books I'm reading this month, so I'm only going to give you a little bit of information about them. But The Leopard Prince is about a, a lady, a duchess, who has an estate which needs to be run by a steward. She needs a manager to help her run it. And it's the story of how she employs... Um, a gentleman who will come in and help her and how they fall in love from there. So that's a three. Past Eves. So as you can see, the next book is to... Uh, I've landed on Past Eves, which is to read a historical fiction novel. Uh, this one I've picked. It's not um, strictly a romance, but I'm assuming there's going to be romance in there because of the subject matter. Um, but I have picked to read Lancelot by Giles Christian. Uh, this is a horror historical fiction novel set around the legend of King Arthur, but this time told from Lancelot's point of view. I don't really know very much about it. It's a book I've had my eye on for quite a while now. I saw it when it came out in hardback and I've always been quite intrigued by the legends of Arthur. I've read quite a, a, a few of them more the the um, actual factual legends um, as such but never really much historical fiction about it um, and I've always been intrigued by Lancelot and his story so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up and another nine and that takes me up to a more avenue so my final pick for this month, I have, as you can see, landed on a more avenue and this is to read an age gap romance. Um, and I've picked A Nordic King by Karina Hal. This is the story of a young woman who goes to work for a king who has been widowed and has two young princesses to be looked after. She has gone there to work as the nanny. And again, it's the story of how they meet and they fall in love and obviously all the trials and tribulations that come from a king falling in love with a commoner, um, also still being in grief for his, his lost wife 
Um, so for the In Death read along, the next book is Rapture in Death. Um, at the point that I'm filming this, I haven't actually read the book for March yet. It's not quite the end of March. I've got a few days left. Um, but also, as with pretty much elsewhere in the world, we are now on lockdown um, in the UK or effectively a lockdown in the UK. But I have a few days now. So I have the whole of today. It's Friday today. I've got the whole of Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday to read the um third book immortal in death um but yes so the fourth book is rapture in death um obviously by this point eve and rourke are very securely in a relationship together um and again eve will have a serial killer to catch um and in prison so i i look forward to them they're quite they're not i wouldn't say the formulaic like i say at the moment i've only read two books um but at the end of every one, I do think, oh, I really want to get on to the next one. Uh, but I haven't been because there are 50 books. And I know if I did that, I would burn out on the series. So I'm trying to keep to the one book a month for now. But that will be, Rapture and Death will be the one that I read in April. So now on to the Owls readathon. And this one I'm very much looking forward to. I love Harry Potter anyway myself. So I think it's absolutely brilliant that someone has actually managed to set up a readathon themed around Harry Potter in some way. And I love the idea that I've got to take my exams. Uh, what G has done is she set up a whole careers pamphlet, which she has linked online. You can get to online. And from there you pick what career you want to uh, move into and it tells you which exams you need to take both for owls and newts. I had a look through them, I had a flip look through them and for me uh, the one that actually sang to me was Care of Magical Children. Uh, when I was younger I wanted to be a teacher, I wanted to go into teaching and looking after other people's children and so it just felt really natural for me to to gravitate towards to that one. And I'm really glad I did. Like I say, for each subject, it gives you the exams that you need to take. And and I have been given eight exams to take. Um, quite doable for me, especially if we're going to be on annual leave for the rest of April or um, lockdown for the rest of April. I'm sure I can probably whiz through quite a few of these. Um, some of them aren't very big either. Uh, so I should be able to get on quite quickly with those. Uh, but I'll just go through them and tell you which ones I need to take. So for Care of Magical Children, I need to take eight exams. And I'll tell you what those are in alphabetical order. The first one is Arithmancy. Then I need to take Charms. Then I need to take Defence Against the Dark Arts. Then Herbology. Then History of Magic. Then I need to take Muggle Studies potions and finally transfiguration so those are the eight subjects that I will be taking and I actually have uh, decided which eight books I'm going to read so I'll just tell you what each of those are. For arithmancy you have to read outside of your favourite genre and for this one again um, because historical fiction isn't something that I read a lot of I have decided to read Lancelot by Giles Christian. So I'm actually doubling up on this one. So it's covering um, Romanceopoly and it's covering the um, Owls Readathon as well. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I think I'll probably knock this one off quite quickly, actually, if I'm doing it for both, because then I'll have a head start on both and that will be really, really, really great for me. Uh, so that's book one. For Charms, I have to read a book with a white cover. And for this, I've decided to read The One You Want by Gina Showalter. This is a new adult romance, small town romance novel um, set in small town America. And other than that, I don't really know very much more about it. It's a book that's been sat on my TBR for about four years now. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting to that one and moving another one off of my huge huge tbr that i have so for defense against the dark arts the theme is to read a book that's set by the sea and i've decided to reread nation by terry pratchett this is a book that i read when it first came out many many years ago and i remember really enjoying it at the time i 
think it's more of a middle grade age book from Terry Pratchett rather than one of his adult fictions. Um, but I did enjoy it at the time and it is one that every time I go through my Kindle and look at my Terry Pratchett books that I've got on there, it catches my eye and I really, really want to reread it. So I thought that that would be perfect for this challenge. So for Herbology, the theme is to read a book that starts with an M and I have failed a little bit in my March TBR. So I've decided to carry one over and that is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the sequel to the Strange the Dreamer uh, that I read in February and absolutely fell in love with. I did kind of make a short start on this in uh, March, but I didn't get very far with it. Um, kind of other books then took over. I was feeling a bit slumpy towards the end of March when I'd picked this up because of everything that's going on in the world at the moment. Um, so I'm going to give this one another go in April. I'm sure I'll get to it. It's a library book but our libraries have actually closed down and they've told us that uh, as soon as they reopen, any fines that we've accrued for not renewing books because we couldn't get to our libraries or don't have access online, then they will actually um, cancel any fines. So I've got a bit of time to read this one now, but I'm aiming to read it in April and I'm aiming to read it for uh, Herbology so that I can um, get this one, another one off of my current TBR. So, like I say, this is the follow-up to Strange the Dreamer. Uh, Laszlo Strange is really coming into his own and finding out who he is now in this one. And I look forward to seeing where this book takes us after the ending of the last one. So, for A History of Magic, I'm cheating a little bit. The theme for this <coughs> test is to read a book about witches or wizards. Um, as you all know, if you've watched my previous TBR videos and wrap-ups, I've been rereading Harry Potter and I actually still have one Harry Potter left to read and that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Um, so like I say, it is a cheat. It's a Harry Potter readathon. It's to read about witches and wizards. What better book to choose? Um, this is one that I'm always reluctant to start when I read these books because of how uh, Half-Blood Prince ends and because of how this one starts and in the middle and in the battle it, it's the one that really rips your heart out um, for everybody uh, but yes I am looking forward to reading this one and I'm probably going to get to this one quite quickly in April as well like I say I'm feeling a little bit slumpy with everything that's going on I'm struggling to read a little bit um, but then aren't we all at the moment so yes we all know what Deathly Hallows is about. It's the last book in the series and it's it's just going to tear me apart but I'm going to love it while I'm reading it and I'm looking forward to that one immensely. So for Muggle Studies, the theme is to read a contemporary novel. Um, I'm not really sure what to read so I thought I'd just go with one of my romance novels and again knock another one off of my TBR that I already own. And I've gone with Southern Player by Jessica Peterson. This is a romance novel set in New Orleans in uh, America. And it's about a coffee shop owner and uh, not sure, he's some sort of sports um, player who's obviously starting to struggle within his sport and, and things are changing for him. And it's all about how they meet and come together and their differences in their expectations and how they make those fit together and fall in love. So I'll be very much looking forward to that one. I read Southern Charmer, which is the first book in Jessica Peterson series um, just a few days ago. And I actually really did enjoy it while I was reading it. I couldn't put it down. Um, it, it's not the best romance I've read, but they, they are very good. They take your mind away from everything. So I'm looking forward to reading that one as well. So for potions, the theme is to read a book that is less than 150 pages. And this one I have picked up Elevation by Stephen King. So in true Stephen King style, there is something odd happening uh, to the main character. He's losing weight and they can't really identify why. And then he has new neighbours that move in next to him and he has issues with them and then there are issues that happen within the town which bring things to light and he then um, obviously sees their perspective 
rather than his own. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. It's only 130 pages long, the story. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to picking up. I haven't read a Stephen King for about 18 months now. I think I read Rose Madder beginning of last year, maybe the end of the year before, which is my absolute favorite Stephen King book. Um, but I haven't read one since and I'm really looking forward to getting back into it. And the final exam is for Transfiguration and this is to read a book that features shape-shifting. I have chosen to read one of Jesse Donovan's latest books. It's a romance novel and it's about dragon shapeshifters, <clears throat> and that is called The Dragon's Pursuit. I, I believe this is in her Lockguard Highland Dragons and it will carry on some themes from there. Um, her series are now starting to join up, the ones in the UK, because all the clans are starting to talk to each other more. Uh, so we probably will get some resolution uh, to some of the things that are happening. There's the dragon knights that the dragons are battling and they're obviously trying to be more accepted into the wider community, non-dragon community uh, within the UK. So I'm sure this book will continue that and give me a taste for the next one that's due out a bit later on this year. So those are all the books that I plan on reading in April. I am hoping to get to all of them. And uh, like I say, there's only 11 books there, which as I'm not at work for the next couple of weeks at least, I'm hoping that I can get through a good chunk of them. I'm hoping I can beat this slump and as I settle into the new normal for a while. Uh, I do have a couple of other books that I have ongoing. As you can see, nope, there, I've got a gap um because i'm read i'm still reading the great hunt by robert jordan um so i read book one end of last year and then i've got uh i've got the next three books there and also arrived just before i filmed this video i've got the rest of the books in the series have just arrived as well i thought if i'm gonna be confined to the house for a few weeks i'd better make sure i've got plenty of reading material not that i didn't already but hey ho needs must when the devil drives um so there we go that yeah, so i will be continuing with the great hunt as well i'm uh, it's it's quite um dense so i need to be in the right headspace really to sit down with it but i'm just trying to get myself rested and relaxed so i think if i can get through some of these books um that will help me and i will then hopefully be able to move on and whiz through the rest of the series other than that uh i've got um I've got a couple of other ongoing books. I'm I'm still reading David Copperfield. I haven't read very much of it. And I'm still reading A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. Uh, I actually got a chunk of that listened to while I went away on a reading retreat. Um, but I'll talk more about that in my wrap up. So there we go. Um, I hope you've all got uh, lots to keep you occupied in the next few weeks. And I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.